Hey everybody, so today's lecture is going to be on uh, cellular immunity, and we're also going to touch on uh, humoral immunity as well, I think. Okay, so cell-mediated immunity or cellular immunity is a form of specific defense in which your T-cells or your T-lymphocytes directly attack and destroy diseased or foreign cells. So these are direct attacks. These are not just um, chemical signals. These are direct attacks from your T-cells onto a pathogen or a foreign cell or a foreign uh, particle, okay? Uh, the immune system res uh, remembers the antigens and prevents them from causing disease in the future, and that's part of our adaptive immunity. We want to have um, a, a, re a memory of the things that we've been infected with or things that we've been um, exposed to so that if we ever are exposed to them again, uh, that we can... Um, attack them and get rid of them as uh, quick as possible. Okay, so we have four classes of T-cells. We have our cytotoxic T-cell. We have our helper T-cell. We have our regulatory T-cell and our memory T-cell. So let's talk about those individually. So our cytotoxic or TC cells, cytotoxic T-cells, you can write them T with a subscript of C there. Uh, we call those killer T cells as well. Okay, so it's cytotoxic and killer T cells are the same thing. We can call them CD8 cells. We can call them T8 cells, CD8 plus cells, lots of different names for the same type of cell. But they are considered to be effectors of cellular immunity, and they carry out attacks on enemy cells. Enemy cells could be bacteria, could be virus particles, could be fungi, could be protozoan. Whatever they are, they are direct. Uh, they take direct action against the pathogen. Then we have helper T cells. Okay, helper T cells promote cytotoxic T cells as well as B cell action in innate immunity. So these helper T cells aren't gonna necessarily do direct attacks. They are going to be, uh, they're gonna be little labelers. Okay, they're gonna be little whistleblowers uh, for cytotoxic T cells, okay, as well as B cells. So when a viral particle or a bacterial particle enters your body, a helper T cell can see that bacterial particle or bacterial cell or viral particle, and it will label that pathogen as um, you know foreign or something that should not be in the body. Um, it could label it for destruction. And what that's going to do is it's going to help to promote cytotoxic T cells to come to the area to take care of that particular pathogen or it could also promote B cells to produce antibodies against that particular uh, pathogen. Okay, we have uh, regulatory T cells, okay, which inhibit manipulation and, and cytokine secretion by other T cells, which are going to limit your immune response. Okay, anything that's regulatory is going to, um, part of its job is going to, uh, to turn things on and off, right? So you have regulatory um, genes that um, allow for uh, genes to be turned on and off, right? There are certain times we want mitosis to happen. There are certain times we don't want mitosis to happen. So we have regulatory proteins that are going to activate genes or deactivate genes depending on if we need them or not, right? You want your immune system to work the same way. You want your immune system to work when it needs to work and you want your immune system to rest when it needs to rest. And that's what these regulatory T cells are gonna help to do. <clears throat> We have memory T cells, okay? And memory T cells are gonna descend from the cytotoxic T cell, so they're gonna be related to the cytotoxic T cell, but they're gonna be responsible for the memory in within cellular immunity. So they're gonna attempt to remember pathogens that have infected you, remember pathogens that, have, uh, you, that you have been exposed to, that made you sick, so that if you are ever exposed to those particular pathogens again, you can deal with them appropriately. You can, you know, take care of them quickly and get them out of the body so that you are not uh, infected or sick by, uh, made sick by them again. Okay, both cellular and humoral immunity occur in three stages. Okay, and we can think of those as the three R's. We can think of them as recognize, attack or react, and memory or remember, right? So if you, if you, if you don't wanna remember RAM, Okay, you can remember RAM if you want, recognize or recognition, attack, and memory, or you can make them all R's if that 
it's a, a little acronym that helps you will be recognize, react, and remember. Okay, but those are the three steps or the three, three stages of humoral and cellular immunity. We want to recognize that, th that this thing is uh, a foreign body, that it's not part of our self. We want to attack that particular uh, antigen or pathogen in a particular way, whether that be producing antibodies or um, phagocytosis or uh, labeling. Okay, and then we want to remember that pathogen for a later time. So the recognition, aspects of recognition in cellular immunity. Uh, antigen pre presentation and T-cell activation are very important in the recognition of, anti uh, of antigens. Okay, what antigen presentation is, is an APC or an antigen presenting cell will encounter and process an antigen. So uh, an antigen presenting cell, something like a, a monocyte could encounter an antigen. It can, when it says processes, that, that could mean that it you know, phagocytizes uh, or engulfs an antigen or a pathogen, breaks it up into small pieces, and then displays the small pieces of that particular antigen onto its surface. That's why it's called an antigen presenting cell. It's presenting antigen particles to the other immune cells. But it's not going to just stop there. Okay, so once it encounters and processes that antigen, it's going to migrate to a lymph node. Okay, it wants your immune system to see it. And where is your immune system held? Your immune system is held in your lymph tissue, which is held in your lymph nodes. So this antigen presenting cell that has just, you know, destroyed a bacteria or a viral particle and now is displaying those particles on its surface is going to migrate to the lymph nodes where they know that other immune cells are going to be and displays it to those T cells, displays it to those other immune cells that are there in the lymph node. So when those T cells encounter the displayed antigen on the MHC, which is the major histocompatibility complex or the major histocompatibility protein, that's the, the MHC is the combination of the antigen on the antigen presenting cell. Okay, so when you, when you have a combo of uh, antigen particle and uh, on an antigen presenting cell, that what, it, what it's presenting is called an MHC, a major histocompatibility complex. And when this T cells encounter that antigen on that MHC, that will initiate an immune response. Okay, so that's the recognition, right? So this T cell is recognizing this antigen that's being presented on the surface of that antigen presenting cell, that monocyte, whatever that cell would be. So that's recognition, the T cell recognizing that is a foreign particle and that if I see that again, I have to get rid of that particle no matter what, okay? T cells uh, can respond to two classes of major histocompatibility proteins. So you have MHC1 proteins, which are constantly produced by all your cells, all nucleated cells, except your blood cells, obviously, your red blood cells. Uh, these MHC1 proteins are transported to and inserted onto the plasma membrane for presentation. Okay. If they are normal self antigens, they do not elicit a response. So if you have a cell, for instance, <clears throat> let's say you have a, a cell in your body that's not performing correctly. Uh, maybe it's, it's old and that cell has to be destroyed and recycled, but it, it was part of you, right? It was, it was a cell that was part of you. Maybe it was part of you for a while. Maybe it was part of you for a little bit. It doesn't matter. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a you cell, a self cell. If your body breaks that cell down because of whatever reason and displays it on its surface, your T cell is going to be able to recognize, is that a self antigen or is that not a self antigen? Okay. And if it is a self antigen, it knows, all right, that's, that's not, it's not something trying to make us sick or trying to infect us. It's just one of our cells that maybe wasn't working properly or the, that went bad. Okay. Or just, or just needs to be, or it's old and it needs to be recycled. Okay. Like a, like a red blood cell. If they are viral proteins, if they're viral particles, we don't like to say viral cells because cell because viruses aren't alive and cells are the smallest unit of life. So a viral particle is what we you know refer to viruses as. Okay, if they are viral proteins or viral particles or an abnormal cancer antigen, okay, then a T cell will respond to that um, presentation of that on an MHC one. Okay, infected or malignant cells are then destroyed before they can do any further harm. Now. A, don't get me wrong, that does not always happen. Okay, malignant, malignant tumors 
are not always destroyed by your body. Okay. Um, and that's, that's why sadly people get sick, but, um, part of the process, um, of your immune system is to identify malignant cells like that so that they can be destroyed so that no further harm can be done. Okay. The second type of, um, MHC protein that T cells can respond to are MHC two proteins which are called human, human leukocyte antigens, or HLAs, okay? They only occur on these antigen-presenting cells, and they display only foreign antigens. So going back here, MHC1 proteins are not presented by your antigen-presenting cells. These are presented, these are made by all nucleated cells in the body. Okay, so your bone cells can do this. Your liver cells can do this. Your brain cells can do this. Okay. It doesn't matter. As long as that cell has a nucleus, it could do that. And your T cells are going to know that this is not something that's trying to, to kill us because an MHC1 only comes from our normal self cells. Okay. However, an MHC2 protein or a human leukocyte antigen, an HLA, <clears throat> excuse me, these are particles being presented by cells that are specific for your immune system. They're not just bone cells. They're not just liver cells. They're not just pancreas cells. They're cells that are trying to protect you and keep you safe. They're part of your immune system, right? So it's like, if you, I'm trying to think of an analogy for this, if you had, uh, you know, just some some random person in your neighborhood who says, you know, I, there's, there's a person walking around, he looks kind of suspicious, you might or might not take him seriously. Uh, and then if, you know, but if you, if you saw maybe a detective uh, in your, in your neighborhood who says, watch out for this person. This person is, is dangerous and puts a warrant poster up. You're like, okay, the, 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 the actual police are looking for this individual. That individual could possibly be dangerous. Right? So it's kind of like the same thing. If you just have like normal citizens, those would be like your normal, um, MHC one protein being produced, right? That's your normal, um, civilian telling you that something might be wrong, but they, they, Hey, they might just be paranoid. But here, this is the this is the law enforcement and uh, you know the cop or the detective telling you that there's a that there's a problem here and we need to look for this guy, right? Or look for this person. So these MHC two proteins only occur on these antigen presenting cells. They're only going to be found on your uh, monocytes and macrophages and phagocytes and things like that. Okay, so we have different T cells that are going to respond differently to these MHC one and MHC two proteins. Okay. Cytotoxic T cells are going to respond only to MHC1 proteins, and T helper cells are going to respond to our MHC2 proteins. Okay, so the cytotoxic ones are going to make sure that you know those those everyday self cells are taken care of. If they need to be um, destroyed, they destroy them. If they need to be you know taken out, they can take them out. And the T helper cells are going to respond to our antigen presenting cells by producing um, labels for those particular. Um, proteins. Okay, T cell activation. Okay, T cell activation begins when cytotoxic or helper T cells bond or bind to your MHC protein being displayed or displaying an epitope that the T cell is programmed to recognize. So now remember, we, we talked about epitopes. Epitopes are those portions of antigen that are being presented, right? So you have an antigen, part of that antigen gets put on the surface of a cell that thing that's being presented is called the epitope, okay? So a T cell becomes active when that T cell binds to an MHC protein that's displaying an epitope. And only it's only going to recognize it if it's programmed to recognize it. Remember, cytotoxic T cells, they have to recognize MHC1 proteins. T helper cells recognize MHC2 proteins. Okay. That's the beginning. The beginning is the T cell bonding to the MHC1 or MHC2 that is displaying the epitope of the antigen. The T cell must then bind to another antigen presenting cell protein related to interleukins. Okay. These interleukins are going to be produced when there is a, uh, you know, when your cell is uh, presented with some type of pathogen. Okay, the T cell must check twice to see if it is really bound to a foreign antigen. 
Okay, it wants to make sure that it's not going to kill a self cell. It wants to make sure that it is bound to a foreign antigen. And to help ensure that the immune system does not launch an attack on the absence of an enemy, right? You don't want your cells attacking healthy, good, normal self cells. You want them to attack foreign cells. Okay. This would turn against one's own body and injure our own tissues, which is called an autoimmune disease, which we spoke about briefly in another chapter. <clears throat> and we'll speak about it again in another lecture past this one. Okay, because so once you get successful co-stimulation, uh, it will trigger uh, something called clonal selection, in which activated T cells will undergo repeated mitosis. The reason for that is that you want that T cell that knows the information, that knows the, the foreign antigen, and knows what it's supposed to be looking for, you want that T cell to replicate into more T cells just like it that have that know that same information, right? You're essentially making clones, right? This, this gives rise to a clone of identical T cells programmed against that same epitope, right? So that T cell attached to an epitope of an antigen on an antigen presenting cell, it made sure that it's a foreign antigen and once it knows that it's a foreign antigen, it will replicate, make more of itself so that you have more of the same T cells looking for that same antigen, right? Because chances are when you get infected with something, you don't have just one viral particle in you. You don't have just one bacterial cell in you. You have maybe thousands or millions of these bacterial and viral particles inside of you. So you want to have as many, I, I, I always like to think of these things as cops, right? Or, or police officers. If you have a T cell that knows exactly what to look for, right? This T cell knows exactly what to look for in, in the suspect, right? So if you have hundreds of the same T cells looking exactly for what they need to be looking for, you're going to be killing that virus um, much more effectively than if you had T cells that don't know what to look for. Okay. If they, they're very specific. Okay. Some cells of the clone, become effector cells and carry out the attacks. Okay, so some of these T cells that are produced or uh, reproduced, re, re, ugh, produced from this replication are actually going to be effector cells and effector means that it's gonna take action and attack the actual um, pathogens. And others become memory T cells. Other ones become T cells that are um, helpful in the aid of knowing and remembering these pathogens for a later infection or, you know, a possible later infection. <clears throat> okay, so here's a, a flow chart of kind of what we just spoke about. Okay, you have your antigen here being presented on a antigen presenting cell. Okay, so here is my monocyte and it's presenting this antigen on the MHC protein. Okay, here's my major hist histocompatibility protein presenting this antigen here. This is a T cell that is now bound to this um, APC, this antigen presenting cell. Once that it, once it makes sure that this is not a self cell, make sure that this, this antigen is not coming from one of your normal cells. Once it realizes that this antigen is a foreign antigen, an antigen that should not be there, it goes through massive replication. Okay, it goes through massive replication and differentiation as well, right? If this is a cytotoxic T cell, it will replicate and some of them will become cytotoxic T cells, which become effectors, which then go and kill enemy cells. Because you can see here, here's that same protein. Okay, it's looking for this little yellow protein that was presented here and they find it here on this surface of this enemy cell or this antigen. And this T cell, which is a clone of this T cell, which knows exactly what to look for, even though these cells were never exposed to this antigen, right? That's what's so cool about this. These cells that were reproduced or, you know, um, replicated, these cells have never been exposed to this antigen. Only this cell has, right? We can call this cell, you know, A prime or whatever, okay? This was, you know, A double prime, A triple prime, A quadruple prime. These cells have never been introduced to this antigen, but it knows, it has the info because it is a direct clone of this cell that does have the info. And then when these cells see that particular antigen for the first time, they know to kill it. 
So if that was a, a cytotoxic T cell, it could do that. If it was a T helper cell, it could do that. But again, only if that a T helper is only going to attack the MHC2, the cytotoxic will only attack the MHC1. Okay. And then, so some of these uh, cells that get produced from this cell are going to become effectors. So they, it, like I said, if this was a, a cytotoxic, it, it'll become effector cytotoxic cells. If this was a helper cell, it will become helper cells. And if some of them are not going to become effectors, some of them will become memory cells. So that these cells can remember this antigen for future infections. And that's really important to our immunity, right? We really want these memory cells to do their job because if we're ever infected with this antigen again, if we're ever infected with this enemy cell again, we want to make sure that we uh, take care of them in the proper way. Okay, second thing is attack, right? So we have the recognition. We understand the recognition of these cells and the recognition of, of the T cells to the antigen. We also know the activation, how those T cells are activated. So now let's talk about how the attack actually occurs, okay? So helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells play different roles in the attack uh, in cellular immunity. T cells play a central role in coordinating both cellular and humoral immunity, okay? So helper T cells, like I said before, they're gonna play in a very important role in the direct attacking of cells, but they're also going to have a much bigger role in the, in the calling of other cells like B cells to produce antibodies against these particular antigens. Okay, so here, when we have a helper T cell recognize the antigen that's attached to the MHC. Okay, so we have our major histocompatibility complex and we have our antigen being presented on the surface of an antigen presenting cell. We have the activation, right? This T cell, this T cell's been activated. It knows what to look for. It finally sees it and now comes into contact with it. What's it going to do, right? So we're he, we are here at this point or at this point, okay? The cell has been activated. The cell knows now what to look for. So these cells know what to look for. These cells know what to look for. So what happens when it actually sees what it's looking for, okay? What a T helper cell does is it will secrete things called interleukins. And an interleukin is going to do a couple of things. Number one, it's going to attract other immune cells. And the immune cells that interleukins attract are neutrophils and natural killer cells. Okay, these interleukins aren't actually doing any killing. Okay, they're not doing any action on to the enemy cell. So go back up. Here are my interleukins. Once this cell sees the antigen that it's supposed to be looking for, it releases these interleukins. These interleukins are not killing the enemy cell, but these interleukins are attracting other fighters, other parts of the police department to come for, for help. It's basically backup, right? They're going to attract macrophages. Macrophages are phagocy uh, phagocytotic cells, okay, that are going to come. Uh, they stimulate the phagocytic activity of those macrophages and inhibit them from leaving the area. So they attract they attract other immune cells, and then they don't let them leave the, th that area because that area could possibly be full of these antigen-presenting cells, okay? T helper cells are also going to stimulate T cell and B cell mitosis and maturation, right? So in your uh, thymus, <coughs> in your spleen, in your red bone marrow, sorry, in your red bone marrow and in your thymus, you're going to have immature T cell and B cells, and they are not immunocompetent, <coughs> excuse me, until they're activated, okay, until they're mature. So what these interleukins are going to do is it's going to force T cells and B cells in the marrow, in the thymus to become immunocompetent so that they can now interact with some type of uh, antigen or antigen presenting cell. So let's take a look here. So here we have our T4, our T helper cell or our CD4 cell. Okay. They're going to produce these interleukins. 
these interleukins are going to help with humoral immunity in the sense that they are going to attract B cells and make B cells immunocompetent so that antibodies can be produced. It's going to produce interleukins that are going to attract cytotoxic T cells, okay, for cellular immunity, for any, any cells that are um, presenting HCM1, H, MHC1 proteins with antigens on them, these cytotoxic T cells can come take care of that. It's also going to release macrophage activating factors, which are separate from interleukins. They're, they're a family of interleukins. And those macrophage activating factors are going to recruit macrophages. And remember what a macrophage is. It's a, it's a large uh, leukocyte that is going to engulf or phagocytize uh, antigens or pathogens. Okay, so this T helper cell doesn't necessarily do any attacking, right? And that's, that's, that's why it's called a helper cell, okay? It's, it's a helper cell. Okay, the attack is indirect, okay? So it's just like kind of like, you know, in, in most cases, a general of an army doesn't do the actual attacking. It just gives the orders to attack. It's, yeah, in a way, it's kind of like what's happening, right? You have this, you have this cell. It recognizes an enemy. It gives out these chemical signals. It's kind of like Paul Revere, right? The red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. Okay, it kind of gives these these warning signals to B cells, like, "Hey, we have an issue here. Come make some antibodies." Hey, this cell is an a, uh, an MHC one uh, presenting cell. Cytotoxic T cells come take care of it. Hey, we have an issue here. Um, macrophages come destroy this. Okay, so that's what this T helper cell is doing. Okay, the, the, T, uh, the cytotoxic T cells or the CD8 cells are going to be the only cells that actually directly attack other cells. Okay, so when a, T, a cytotoxic T cell recognizes a complex of an antigen and an MHC1, remember they only recognize MHC1, um, on a diseased or a foreign cell, it docks onto that cell and it will actually cause that cell to go through, um, you know, cytolysis, what we call it, okay? So after docking onto the antigen-presenting cell with the MHC1 protein, the cytotoxic T cell will deliver a, a lethal hit of chemicals, okay? So we talked about perforins and granzymes in a previous lecture, and what they do is they will kill uh, the cell in a very similar manner that natural killer cells did that we saw in the last lecture. Basically, they, they, these perforins produce almost like a straw-like structure or a tube-like structure that will penetrate the plasma mem membrane of the antigen or the enemy cell or the pathogen. And then interferons and other chemicals can be introduced into this pathogen and cause this pathogen to be destroyed. Okay, interferons are going to inhibit viral replication. Those are going to be chemicals that inhibit the replication of viruses. They're also going to help recruit other macrophages. There's a chemical called tumor necrosis factor that helps in macrophage activation and helps to kill cancer cells. After releasing all these uh, lethal chemicals onto the enemy cell, the cytotoxic T cell will go looking for other enemy cells while their chemicals do their work. Okay. So, I mean, I, I hate to keep making analogies to like, you know, wars and, and generals and fights, but that's what this is, right? That's exactly what this is. Your, your immune system is an army set out to protect you under all costs. And it's looking, searching, actively searching for enemies. Okay. So, you know, if you had, if you were a soldier and you found a base that had your enemies in it, you might, you know, throw a hand grenade into the building with the, with your enemies in it. And then, you know, run away to try to find another building with, with enemies in it and throw another grenade in there. That's exactly what cytotoxic T cells are doing. They're finding these enemy cells. They're releasing these chemicals onto them that stop them from growing or destroy them in, you know, from the inside out. Okay. With chemicals and going on to the next one and doing what they have to do to keep you safe and to keep you healthy. Okay, 
So here is a cancer cell, this, this yellow cell here. And we have a whole bunch of cytotoxic T cells. This is an actual picture of real cells. Okay, this is under an electron microscope. Okay, so you're looking at this in millions of times of uh, magnification. And you can see that these cytotoxic T cells are docking with this cancer cell, with this uh, you know, cell that needs to be taken care of. And they are injecting them with chemicals to stop this cell from, from living, to kill that cell from the inside out. Okay, so the last one, the last part of this is going to be called uh, the memory part, okay, or the remembering part. Okay, so immune memory follows the primary response in the cellular immunity. Okay, following clonal selection, some of those T cells, uh, some of those T helper and some of those T cytotoxic cells become memory cells, right? So we go back to our picture here. After this activation of the helper or the cytotoxic T cell, once they know what to look for, they can either become cells that are effectors that go after the, the bad guys, or they can be cells that remember what the bad guy is for a, for a future uh, invasion. Okay. So let's go back here. So that's what that is. Following clonal selection, some of these T cells become memory cells. They live for a long time because we want them to live for a long time because we want to protect you against a future infection. And you don't know how long that future infection is going to, to, to be. That could be, you know, two weeks later, right? If, if you have, you know, COVID-19 and you, um, you, you get COVID, your body's going to produce memory cells so that if you get COVID in the future, you know how to deal with it. Right? And you don't know if you're going to get COVID three weeks later. You don't know if you're going to get COVID two years later. Okay, you want these memory cells to live as long as possible. These memory cells are going to be more numerous than the uh, other T cells that you have that are not um, activated okay, or naive. Right? They need fewer steps to be activated, so they respond more rapidly. That's the whole point of having a memory cell, right? so that they can respond more rapidly to an infection. Upon exposure to that same pathogen, so let's say, you know, you, you get COVID two months later, okay, uh, you are re-exposed to that same pathogen later in life, even, even a year later, okay, your memory cells, your T memory cells that were produced from that response launch a quick attack so that no noticeable illness occurs. So you should not even know that you were sick. You shouldn't even know that you had or were exposed to that second round of COVID, right? If we're using COVID as an example, right? We could use anything as an example. You can use strep throat as an example. You can use uh, influenza as an example. It doesn't really matter. The point of it is in a later exposure, this uh, reaction should be quicker because those T memory cells were produced. And you should, that is called being immune to a disease. Now that immunity can wane over time, right? If you don't, if you're not exposed to that disease again for a very long period of time, those T memory cells might die. Those T memory cells might be uh, recycled and you'll lose your memory, so to speak. And then you can get uh, infected with that um, pathogen again upon re-exposure later in life. Okay, and I think that is going to be where we end for today. So we will, we will call that quits there. And next lecture, we'll talk about humoral immunity, and we will talk about um, some ways that the immune system malfunctions. We'll talk about some autoimmune diseases. All right. So hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Bye.